Hi everyone. Today uh, we're going to look at the last part of this graphing section dealing with graphing sinusoidal functions. <clears throat> and the last part of it is called phase shifts. Okay, so graph, si graph sinusoidal functions, phase shifts. Now let's, before we begin, just want to define what a phase shift is. Basically, a phase shift is referring to what we know as a, a horizontal shift. Okay? So we know, studying from our transformations, that we can also do horizontal shifts, right? Not just vertical shifts, but horizontal shifts. Horizontal shifts, of course, mean shifts that go to the left or to the right. Okay? So let me kind of give you an example here <clears throat> of a phase shift. So I'm going to show you in Desmos. First, we're going to do y equals sine x. Okay, and I'm going to make that a little bit bigger. So here is a typical sine graph, correct? Starts here at 0, 0, just the parent sine function. Goes up to 1 for the max comes back down the negative one for the min and then finishes at zero again and this is this here is two pi right pi is about three so two times three is six a little more than six so we could see that that is one full period for sine okay now what if I graph this y is equal to sine of x minus one Okay, oops, sorry. So take a look. Take a look at the difference between sine of x and sine of x minus 1. By putting, by subtracting 1 from x, look what happened to my graph. Okay, here's my original sine function right here. And here is sine of x minus 1. Do you see? that the original sine graph was shifted one unit to the right. So now point zero zero, which uh, was at the origin on sine, is now shifted over to point one zero on sine of x minus one. Likewise, if you look up here at the max, the max for sine of x was at pi over two comma one, but now it's been shift shifted over so now the, the, the max is at 2.571, which is approximately double, right? Which is exactly double. Um, it's not double, sorry, it's added one, right? So it's pi over two plus one is 2.571. So by putting a minus one, I effectively took the sine function and shifted it one unit to the right. And this is called a phase shift. A horizontal shift is called a phase shift. We're talking with sinusoidal functions. Likewise, if I were to take that same function and now add one to the x, now look what happens. Okay, so we know that horizontal shifting is counterintuitive. So if you were to add one to x, instead of now going to the right, it's going to go one unit to the left. So this point is now shifted over one unit to the left. Okay, likewise, this maximum point here was also shifted one unit to the left. So every point on sine of x has now been shifted one unit to the left. Is that clear, folks? Okay, good. So this, again, is a very simple example of a horizontal shift. Now let's take a look at cosine. Okay. Here's cosine of x. And we know that cosine starts at the max, right? Normal parent co function cosine starts at the max. And after one full period, it's going to end at the max. So it starts at the max, goes down through the midline, which is the x-axis here, goes to the minimum value. So max is 1, goes down to 0, comes back down to negative 1, and then goes right back up through the midline to the max. This is one full period. Now, again, I'm going to do the same thing. If I take the cosine 
and I subtract 1 from x. Again, same thing happens to the cosine as it did with the sine. The cosine function, again, has been shifted one unit to the right. And so you subtract 1 from x, it shifts one unit to the right. Okay? And now, again, if I change it to x plus 1, I'm sorry, x plus 1, now it takes the maximum and shifts it one unit to the left. Again, counterintuitive, right? Okay, so that kind of gives us a picture of what's happening when you are adding or subtracting to the x value. You're actually shifting. You're shifting your function to the left or to the right. Adding means to the left. Subtracting means to the right. Okay, so now how do we graph this? Okay, well, we definitely have to employ what we've already learned, which is, of course, we have to find a few things first, right? So we have to find the amplitude. Sorry. So we definitely have to find the amplitude. Let me use uh, dark blue. We definitely have to find the amplitude. Whoa, that's too thick. that's all right um, so we definitely have to find the amplitude okay now I am going to write this function because now we have a phase shift here right we're adding or subtracting to the x value we now have a phase shift so before I do this I am going to first write this function and I'm going to factor out a common factor from inside the parentheses. So 3 cosine. Now the common factor in here you can clearly see is pi, right? So I'm going to factor out a pi. Like so. And I'm going to put another parentheses here. Put a parentheses here. Pi and then I'm going to write what's left. If I factor out a pi from pi x I'm going to have x left, and if I factor out a pi from 4 pi, I'm going to have 4 left, like so, plus 2, like that. Okay, so now from this factored form, let's take a look at what our values are. Amplitude, again, here's our amplitude, correct? That's our amplitude, so it's 3. Um, let's do the midline. So the midline here, our midline looks like it's going to be at 2, right? Our frequency here, our frequency looks like it's pi, and our phase shift right there. I'm going to call that C. Our phase shift looks like it's 4. Okay, and it's added, so it looks like it's four units to the left. Okay, guys? So now, again, using the amplitude in the midline, let's find the max and the min. Our max and our min. So, again, max is the midline plus the amplitude, so 3 plus 2 is 5. Our minimum is the midline minus the amplitude, so it's 2 minus 3 is equal to negative 1. Okay, here's our max and here's my, uh, my min. Now let's find the period. Period is 2 pi over the frequency, so it's 2 pi over pi, which gives us 2. Okay. And then, of course, our phase shift is once we have all this, now we've got to shift this function four units to the left. So it's shifted left four units. Okay. Okay. So I think we have enough information here uh, to actually graph it. So let's do it. And they want us to do it using the interactive widget. So, 
max is 5, min is negative 1, period is 2. This is cosine, right? Positive cosine, so it starts at the max. So let's go back to our function. Okay. And let's use the interactive widget. So cosine starts at the max. So I'm just going to kind of scoot this over a little bit. Uh, we're going to start at the max at 5, correct? And let me just see what my values were. My minimum is negative 1, correct? So I have my minimum at negative 1, and the period was 2. Minimum was at negative 1, and the period was 2. Okay. So definitely it looks like I need to make some adjustments here. Uh, minimum was at negative 1, okay? So I'm going to have to change my midline point. Remember, one point represents max or min, and the other point represents the midline. So negative 1, so I have to go down to neg negative 1 is like right here, correct? All right. Yeah, here's negative 1. Here's my, here's my minimum. Here's my maximum 5. So I have those two values now, 5, negative 1. Now I've got to adjust the period. So let me adjust the period to 2. Now 2, the whole function has to stop at 2. So we're way too long. So one period is 2 right there. You see? So max is at 5. Minimum is at negative 1. And one complete period, in other words, max to max, is at 2. This is my correct function if I had no phase shift. But now I have to take into account the phase shift. Phase shift was four units to the left. So every point, sorry about that. So we are back. Um, so what I was saying was, okay, since we have a phase shift of four units to the left, every point on this function has to move four, four units to the left. So the first thing I'm going to move is on midline point, all right? Midline goes four units to the left. Here we go. Let's count. One, two, oops, sorry. Okay, we're going to go from here. So here's one, here's two, here's three, and here's four. Okay? Let's do the same thing up here. We go one, one, two, three, and then four. Okay? Well, eventually, if you look at this graph, this graph looks identical to the graph that we had originally, correct? So luckily it worked out that way. All right, and now let's, let's move this so we can check it. And that is absolutely correct. Okay, so again, just kind of reviewing. Um, we were given the function when we were asked to graph it using the interactive widget. So we first found the amplitude, uh, the midline, the frequency, and the shift, right? We call the shift C. We found the max by adding the amplitude and the midline. We found the min by taking, subtracting the amplitude from the midline. We found the period, again, 2 pi over the frequency is 2. We know this is a shift 4 units to the left because it's plus 4. But before we did that, we made sure that we factored out a pi of any common factors here, correct? We want to make sure that the, uh, that the coefficient of x is 1. So by factoring out pi, we saw that we just made that 1. Okay? And then we went to the graph, okay, we located the max on the y-axis, it's cosine, so it starts at the max. Um, and then we adjusted the graph so that the min was a negative 1, and the period was 2. So from max to max is 2. And then finally we shifted every point 4 units to the left. And luckily in this particular case, the graph ended up being the same as before we shifted. Okay? Alright, take care guys.